My name is Vic McDermott. I am 20 years old and I am from Carlton Place, Ontario. I am an infanteer with the 75th Battalion, part of the 4th Division. Three of my brothers are over here as well. I hope that they are okay. I haven't seen them for a while. My younger brother Art and I signed up one day apart. We joined up in a hurry. We were afraid the war would be over before we got there. We are going to be attacking Vimy Ridge in the next few days. I've been here since January, training and getting ready for this. Before that, I had a few weeks off because I was shot in the leg. We spent most of October and November on the front line. I'm not a hero, I'm just a regular guy doing my part for Canada. If I don't make it, I don't imagine anybody will remember me. Unfortunately, Private Victor McDermott didn't make it home. He was reported as missing on April 9, 1917, and was recorded to be presumed dead on December 12, 1917. Victor's body was never found. He was my great-great-uncle. Victor was wrong about one thing. We certainly remember him. There are many ways in which Victor and all the other soldiers who fought in World War I are remembered. There were more than 60,000 casualties from the war. Forty-seven of these were from Carlton Place, a small town with a population of 4,000. My great-great-grandmother, Mary McDermott, lost three sons to the First World War. Victor and Harold at Vimy Ridge, and Arthur, who was a victim of exposure to poisonous gas, and returned home to Carlton Place to die. In December 1918, plans began to remember the town's lost sons. For the next few years, local community groups began to raise money by holding dances and other events. On May 24, 1924, Mary McDermott, accompanied by her only surviving veteran son, Leo, my great-grandfather, proudly unveiled Carlton Place's memorial. I, when I was a little girl, i have been going to those Remembrance Day services for a long time. And uh, I would go, first of all, uh, I would go with my grandmother, but then uh, I would go with the, uh, when, after she died, I would go with my aunts and my parent, my mother and father. And I wanted to go and take the wreath. and put on in memory of the three uncles and of course my father was the only one that came back. From in 1931, Parliament voted to set November 11 as the day that all of Canada would remember those who gave their lives. On July 1, 1917, Sir Robert Borden, the Prime Minister of the time, dedicated a site in the centre block of Parliament to remember those who died in the battles of the First World War. His original idea was that the names would be engraved on the walls of the memorial chamber, but he soon realized that there would not be enough space on the walls for all the names. The solution for this was to create a book of remembrance. The altar in the memorial chamber was a gift from the British government and was unveiled by the Prince of Wales in August 1927. The steps on which the altar rests are made from stone quarried from Flanders fields. The glass top case contains the first book of remembrance. It was completed in 1942 and is the largest of the now seven books remembered, containing more than 66,000 names. Each morning at 11 o'clock, the page of the book is turned. A calendar was devised so that each page is shown once a year. Victor McDermott's name and that of his brother Harold is on page 280 of the book. The book will be opened to this page on June 20th and 21st of this year. Each year, more than half a million visitors view these books. In 1939, the National War Memorial in Ottawa was unveiled by King George VI. It was originally designed to commemorate Canadians who served in the First World War. A worldwide competition was held in 1925 to choose a design for the memorial. It was hoped to keep alive the spirit of heroism, self-sacrifice, and all that was great and noble in the lives of those who died in the war. The winning design was called the response. It contains 22 bronze figures which symbolize the many Canadians who served in the First World War. The memorial has been rededicated to honor all Canadians who have served in time of war. Victor would never have dreamt that he would be remembered in France. However, his memory lives on at the site of his death, Vimy Ridge. Many consider the battle at Vimy the defining moment for Canada. 
The Minister of National Defense, Gordon O'Connor, had this to say when I interviewed him over the phone. Well, it's the first time the Canadian Army fought together. Um, when uh, World War I broke out, um, Canada, which was then a colony of Britain, immediately committed, uh, went to war and immediately committed military forces. Uh, and they sent over army brigades and army divisions. But it took until uh, Vimy Ridge for all of the army divisions to come together at one point. And it's the first time units from all across Canada fought together. And um, in a sense, we had so many casualties that day. My memory is it's over 3,000 were, were killed that uh, basically our government said that in the future uh, we would not... Uh, commit ourselves to wars unless we did it under our own, uh, you know, our own will of our own people. So it basically started the nationhood sense in Canada. On April 9th, 1917, the objective of the 4th Division, of which Victor was a part, was to capture Hill 145, the highest and most important point of the ridge, in spite of months of planning and practice so that every man would know what was expected of him, the losses were huge. The attack started well with the 87th Battalion heading up the ridge. However, they were caught in the open and killed instantly and failed to destroy the German front line. When Victor's Battalion, the 75th, advanced, they were caught in a sea of bullets. Many soldiers were wounded at battle, and in the end, 3,598 would lose their lives at Vimy. This was not surprising since many French soldiers had perished in the previous attempts to capture the ridge. In 1922, France gave the land surrounding Vimy Ridge to the people of Canada. The Vimy Memorial was unveiled in 1936 and stands on Hill 145. It was constructed to remember the Canadians killed in the First World War. Inscribed on the memorial are the names of the 11,285 Canadian soldiers, were posted missing or presumed dead in France. Somewhere on that wall are the names of Victor McDermott and his brother Harold. In 2003, April 9th was proclaimed the National Day of Remembrance at the Battle of Vimy Ridge. The battle marked the first time that all four divisions of the Canadian Corps went into battle together. A project to restore the Vimy Ridge Memorial began in 2004. On April 9, 2007, it will be 90 years since the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Not only will this be the 90th anniversary, but Veterans Affairs will have completed restoring the monument and it will be rededicated on that day. Veterans wanted to be sure that young Canadians and future generations could see the causes and consequences of war. The Government of Canada agreed and in the year 2000, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was created. On May 23, 2000, a delegation of Canadians, including veterans, Canadian Forces members, and youth representatives traveled to France to bring the remains of the unknown soldier home to Canada. Of the soldiers that were killed in the First World War, almost 20,000 of them have no known grave. 1,603 of these graves are in the vicinity of Vimy Ridge. Many of those who were killed could not be identified or are not found at all. Those who could not be identified were buried under a gravestone that said, A Canadian of the Great War, known only unto God. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission turned over the remains of a Canadian soldier who died in France in the First World War. His name, age, the unit he fought with, and date of his death are unknown. The remains of the unknown soldier sat at the Hall of Honour in the centre block of the House of Commons for three days for Canadians to view the casket and to pay their respects. The casket was then transported in a horse-drawn carriage to the National War Memorial. In a ceremony that aired on national television, the unknown soldier was laid to rest in a specially designed sarcophagus directly in front of the war memorial. Because Victor McDermott's body was never recovered, there is a chance that he is the unknown soldier. Whether he is or not, we can still pay our respects and remember him when visiting the tomb. I'm sure that Victor McDermott had never thought that he would be remembered 90 years after his death at Vimy Ridge. However, I know that there are many ways he has been remembered. I have the opportunity to visit those memorial sites that are nearby. The Cenotaph in Carlton Place, the National War Memorial, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and the Book of Remembrance at the Parliament Buildings in Ottawa. 
I hope someday to have the opportunity to visit the Vimy Ridge National Monument to find where his name is engraved. I asked the Minister of National Defense if he thought Canadians would always remember those who fought in World War I. I think they'll continue to remember World War I because it was a horrific war. And uh, if you read books uh, about that time, uh, people lived in trenches for years. It was just a horrible, horrible war. And I think, uh, yes, I think it'll be taught in our history books for years to come. We're down to about three veterans now from World War One, mm -hmm. So there's only three living veterans, and there are 105 and 106, so I imagine they'll pass on pretty soon. But it'll always be important in the history books because most historians believe that um, uh, the Battle of Emmy Ridge was the foundation of our nation. In the meantime, our family has never forgotten. I asked my grandmother, Martha Knox, her ideas on the subject. Well, to tell you the truth, I'd really like to make sure that they were not forgotten. I hope to carry on the legacy of remembering, as my grandmother does, by laying a wreath at the Cenotaph each November 11th. time today, so I write these lines to say, I am feeling fine, so the life for mine, hard work and some play, underneath the pale moonlight, thinking of you every night, have no fear, sweetheart dear, and while I'm over here, watch, little girl, and hope, little girl, and wait, little girl, for me.